This is BYU Baseball on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. And oh, drives well. that to center. Center fielder Get Apodaca going, going back, going. back to the track, and it's over the wall! Live play-by-play coverage of BYU Baseball is brought to you by doTERRA. doTERRA, proud sponsor of the BYU Baseball team. Now let's get you ready for Cougar Baseball. Here's the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Good evening, Cougar Baseball fans. And for the first time in BYU Baseball history, welcome inside Hawks Field at Haymarket Park in Lincoln, Nebraska, the home of the Nebraska Cornhuskers as tonight the BYU Cougars play for a fourth straight win while taking on a team on a four-game losing streak. I'm your play-by-play broadcaster, Greg Rubel, and thanks for joining me as the Cougars open a key series at the end of a challenging week, a week that began with a change in the BYU dugout. Head coach Mike Littlewood resigning for personal reasons, elevating Trent Pratt into the role of interim head coach. And before we hear from Coach Pratt for the first time in this pregame setting, I want to say thank you to Coach Littlewood for not only his service to the BYU baseball program over a decade, but also his kindness to me as a BYU baseball broadcaster. He will be missed, and I'll be forever grateful for our association. And I'm now eager to work with Coach Pratt, from whom we hear in our leadoff interview presented by doTERRA. doTERRA, pursue what's pure. And tonight, interim head coach Trent Pratt talks about the emotions and approach to coaching the Kooks. I think the biggest thing is we're just excited to play. I think, we, you know, it's been an emotional week with what's gone on, and I think everyone, like when we're at practice and playing, I think that's where I'll feel comfortable. So I think, you know, me and, and talking to all the players, it's just we're just ready to get in a game and, and get back to some normalcy and, and just get ready to play a baseball game tonight. What's the vibe of the guys? It seems great. I mean, they seem upbeat. Practice has been great. Um, I think we're just all excited, like I said, just to get back on the baseball field, and, and I think that's, you know, it's like a sanctuary for us right now. You're going to roll out the same lineup you've gone with the last couple games. It's worked well for you, and you'll uh, hope to get another great Thursday start from Jack. Yeah, Jack's been awesome. Um, he's kind of taken that leadership role and, and been our ace and, and been a bulldog, and we don't hopefully we don't expect that to stop at all. What do you like about your lineup right now? I think we're tough outs right now. I think one through nine last weekend was, I think, the most complete offensive weekend that we've had. Um, just as far as being tough outs and really making the, other, making the pitching staff work, Santa Clara came in with – Man, really good pitching numbers and, and high strikeouts. And we did a great job of like staying in the strike zone and really making those guys work to get us out. And it kind of paid off. We got those starters out, high pitch counts up early, and we were able to get to those guys, which, you know, hopefully that just bodes well as we go forward. A rewarding weekend last weekend when it kind of all came together after some tough luck weekends. Yeah, for sure. There was some tough luck weekends. I f- we felt like we were playing good baseball and having good at-bats and, and just, you know, like it, it's a key hit in one spot or another to really break the game open and and last week we did a great job. There was one of those games early where we didn't get a couple of big hits, but there was no panic, and the guys just kept plugging away and kept making it really hard on, on their pitcher. And then eventually we did get that big hit, and then kind of floodgates opened. And our pitching staff, I mean, when you only give up that many runs in a weekend, right. offense seems a little bit easier as well. So you leave league for a weekend. How do you approach playing Nebraska at their place? Same as like every other game. We're just going to come out and, and be who we are and play hard and – and pitch and throw strikes like we have been and and hopefully just on the offensive side we keep making it tough on people but you know business as usual nice facility on a cool windy day yeah that that's that's that might be a nice way to say it it's a little chilly tonight but luckily we've been out in this weather at home and in january and february you know with our with the turf and we try to go outside as much as we can hopefully prepare us for for these things because we played in this weather at home as well we've been lucky this year to not have played many cold weather games at home but I don't think the weather shouldn't phase these guys. All right, Trent, great to visit with you. Good luck in this one. We'll talk to you post game. Thanks, Greg. I appreciate it. All right, that is BYU interim head coach Trent Pratt. Trent Pratt, let's pause now for our national anthem.
right, some live barbershop quartet action for our national anthem tonight. Good stuff. All right, and it has been a cool, windy day. Temperatures in the mid-50s. Uh, winds out of the west-northwest at only, I'll say only, 16 miles an hour right now. It was really gusty earlier when we came in tonight with the team on the team bus and walked through the, uh, the concourse to get uh, to the BYU dugout. Uh, winds were at that time between uh, 25 and 30 miles per hour, but it has calmed down just a little bit. But with winds out of the west-northwest, we'll see a wind blowing out to left field here tonight. Time now for tonight's starting lineups, courtesy of Big O Tires. Your local Big O Tires has financing available. Big O Tires, the team you trust. We'll start with the visitors who are your BYU Cougars. Leading off and playing shortstop number two, Brock Watkins. Hitting second and playing second base, number five, Ozzie Pratt. Hitting third and playing center field, number six, Mitch McIntyre. Hitting cleanup and manning first base tonight is number 35, Jacob Wilk. Hitting fifth and playing right field, number 27, Ryan Sapiti. Hitting sixth, the third baseman, Austin Deming. Hitting seventh, the DH, number 17, Josh Cowden. Hitting eighth, the catcher, number 18, the freshman, Colin Reuter. And hitting ninth, the left fielder, number 43, Dawson Hall. Starting pitcher for BYU tonight, number 21, Jack Sterner, the right-hander, making his ninth start of the season. Those are the BYU Cougars. They'll be wearing gray jerseys and pants tonight with the block Cougars across the chest. Their cap is navy for this series opener. BYU hitting 267 on the year coming in two tonight. The record overall 17 and 12. They are 6-6 six and six in the WCC and going out of conference for this weekend set here in Lincoln. Now the Nebraska Cornhuskers. They'll lead off with the left fielder, number 13, Cam Chick. Left-handed batting, Cam Chick. Hitting second, the right fielder, number 18, Garrett Anglum. Hitting third, the third baseman, number four, Max Anderson. Hitting cleanup, the catcher, number 16, Griffin Everett. Hitting fifth, the DH, number 47, Nick Wimmers. Hitting sixth, the second baseman, number 14, Bryce Matthews. Hitting seventh, the shortstop, number 20, Cor Jackson. Hitting eighth, and playing center field, number 21, Luke Sartori. And hitting ninth, number 11, the first baseman, Jack Stile. Starting pitcher for the Cornhuskers tonight, and expected to only go two innings at best, is number 28, Cody Frank. That's K-O-T-Y, Cody. Cody Frank making his fifth start of the year, a 4.02 ERA, and he expected to go just a couple of innings tonight before being spelled by Dawson McCarville, another right-hander. That is the game plan for Nebraska tonight. BYU will go with Jack Sterner. It'll be a seven-inning, nine-inning doubleheader tomorrow, and the starting pitcher for the seven-inning game is Ryan Brady. We'll see how things go in the first game before determining a second game starter tomorrow, but the Saturday starter will be Jansen Kiesel. Nebraska in the white uniforms, white jerseys and pants. Block Nebraska across the chest and red caps tonight. We are in a beautiful venue. Hawks Field at Haymarket Park. You're saying, well, who are the Hawks? Well, not a team. It's actually a family name and uh, donors that made this beautiful facility possible. So Hawks Field at Haymarket Park. It also is home to a minor league team. This venue seats 8,486, and the Cornhuskers are averaging near 5,000 tickets sold per game this season. Perennially, one of the top attendance teams in all of college baseball right here in Lincoln. We are ready to go. It'll be Cody Frank delivering to Brock Watkins to get this one underway. Great to have you with us. On the new skin, BYU Sports Network, Cougars and Cornhuskers. Ninth time, all time. That's a swing and a miss from Brock to get this one underway. Brock coming in on a 13-game hit streak, an 18-game streak of reaching base. So 0-1 to Watkins. And that's fouled off the catcher's mask and to the backstop. Catcher Griffin Everett's going to take a minute. Uh, he got dinged. So no balls and two strikes to the first hitter of this game. Brock Watkins. Ozzie Pratt on deck. Ozzie's uncle Trent in his first game as BYU's interim head coach. The kick and fire. And that'll be a three-strike strikeout. A swing and a miss from Brock Watkins. And this game is underway with one down here in the top of the first inning. Ozzie Pratt hits next. The reigning WCC player of the week. BYU had both the pitcher and player of the week this week. Bryce Rob Robison on the mound and Ozzie Pratt offensively. And that'll be a ball from Cody Frank. So first ball thrown by Frank early in this one. 
That's outside. So inside for ball one and outside for ball two. Two balls and no strikes to BYU's second baseman, Ozzie Pratt. He pipes a strike in as Frank is working briskly. One ball, two strikes to Pratt. Just underway, one gone, top of the first. The wind-up and delivery, and that's fouled onto the roof here at Haymarket Park. Dimensions 335 down the left field line, 325 right field line, 395 to straightaway center, but it juts out to a longer distance in left field. The slow roller to first baseman Style, and Jack Style easily handles himself. So a ground out unassisted by the first baseman. And Ozzie Pratt is retired. So a strikeout and a ground out to get this one underway. Mitch McIntyre now hits. BYU center fielder and on-base percentage leader. Two gone here at the top of the first. The kick and the fire from Cody Frank in for strike one. Frank coming in with a 31 and a third innings on his season portfolio. Ball one, one and one the count. Two out, no one on. We're in the top of the first inning here in Lincoln, Nebraska. Wind blowing out to left, left center. That'll be inside and low. Two balls and a strike. Frank doesn't waste a lot of time. He gets right after it. He comes set and goes. And the wind up. Prompts a swing and a miss from Mitch McIntyre. So the count even at 2 and 2. 91 miles an hour off the fingertips that time. Frank with a fastball. That's about the, the top edge of his range with the heater. And that's check swing by Mitch. They'll appeal at third. And no, it'll be a full count now to McIntyre. Home plate umpire Tim Winningham. Tim Farwig at first. Clint Wheeler at second. Robert Wrights at third. Three balls, two strikes, two out, no one on. Here comes the full count delivery from Frank. And that is ripped, but foul onto the berm, just beyond the berm down the right field line. Berm seating on both the first and third base lines against a gorgeous venue. The 3-2 from Cody Frank to Mitch McIntyre. Left-handed bat at McIntyre, and he pops it up over the roof. Count will stay full at 3-2. and two. Mitch has a streak of 12 consecutive games on base. And he has a bunch of ways of getting on base. That'll be a swing and a miss. He won't be on base here in the top of the first. That'll do it for BYU in the top of the first. No runs, no hits, no errors. No one left on. We go bottom one. Cougars and Cornhuskers scoreless on the new skin. BYU Sports Network. This is BYU Baseball. Now back to the ballpark and the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. McIntyre struck out to end the top of the first inning for BYU. Brock Watkins a swinging strikeout and Mitch McIntyre a swinging strikeout two of BYU's three outs and a 1-2-3 top of the first. In between those two Ks was an Ozzie Pratt ground out and BYU was done quickly in the top of the inning. We go bottom one and Nebraska leads off facing Jack Sterner. Jack Sterner making his ninth start of the year. In his first four starts, he only went five innings plus one time. In his last four stars, he's gone at least five and a third every time, including a seven-inning outing at St. Mary's two starts ago. First pitch from Sterner is laced to center field. Mitch McIntyre has a beat on it and makes the catch about five feet shy of the warning track, and that was Cam Chick digging in and taking the first pitch he sees into center field, but caught by McIntyre for out number one. Cam Chick led things off for the Cornhuskers, the left-handed bat of Cam Chick. Now comes the righty, Garrett Anglum. So one gone here in the bottom of the first. Nebraska on a four-game skid coming in. They're 12-18 and 18 on the year. The wind-up and delivery from Sterner is high and a bit outside for ball one. One ball, no strikes with one out. 91 miles per hour from Jack there. Jack, a good four-pitch mix. That's a swing and a miss, and it's quickly 0-2. I beg your pardon, we'll even the count at 1-1. One and one. 93 on the fastball from Sterner. The 1-1, one, one. that's outside for ball two. Now it's two balls and a strike. Fastball in the low to mid-90s. Curveball in the low 70s. A slider, high 70s, low 80s, and a change in the low 80s for Sterner. The wind-up and delivery from Jack, and that's a swing and a miss from Anglum. 
So the count even at two and two. Two balls, two strikes with one out, no one on here in the bottom of the first inning. The white-clad Cornhuskers, the gray-clad Cougars. First of four. They'll play two tomorrow. And then a single game on the getaway day Saturday. And that's sliced foul down the first baseline. Onto the concourse. Kids will give chase. Good crowd on hand. On a chilly, brisk evening. Now the wind more out to left field. More westerly, the wind now. The 2-2 to Anglum. And he'll lift that in the air to right. Ryan Sapiti on the run toward the line and makes the catch just shy of the right field line. So, two gone for Nebraska here in the bottom of the first. Anglum on the fly out to right. So a couple of fly outs to begin this game for the Cornhuskers. Check to center field and Anglum to right field. Third baseman Max Anderson hits third here in the first inning. We're 0-0, BYU and Nebraska. I mentioned ninth time all time. The first eight games are all neutral field affairs. Sterner working first base side of the rubber and goes top half of the zone for call strike one from Tim Winningham, the home plate umpire. So Jack ahead 0-1 off 93 miles per hour, that fastball. Wind up and delivery, foul to the screen. So Jack gets ahead 0-2 on Max Anderson. The leader in runs on this Nebraska team, but uh, runs have been in short supply recently. Nebraska having a tough time. Five or fewer runs in seven of their last nine games coming in two tonight. The 0-2. Wanted to see if Anderson would chase high and away. He did not. It goes to one ball and two strikes. Max Anderson in a rut. One for his last 14 at the plate. The kick and fire from Sterner. That'll be dirted to Reuter. He'll handle it. Two and two. So from 0-2 to 2-2. As that breaking ball hit the dirt at 82. The 2-2. That's a swinging strike, but a foul tip not caught, and it clipped off the umpire's face mask, and he's now popping the mask off, and he's going to take a moment. Third place, uh, third base umpire Robert Wrights will stroll in to check on his compadres. So, too, the second base umpire, Clint Wheeler, and not wanting to be left out, uh, first base umpire Tim Farwig will join the conference at the plate and this is more of a how you doing you're going to be okay type deal as Winningham took one off the face mask count stays two and two by the way so two out no one on we're bottom of the first BYU Nebraska scoreless BYU went quietly one two three in the top of the frame all right Winningham says I'm good to go fans give him a round of applause and he'll retake his spot behind the dish and Anderson will dig back in looking to stay alive in this count Colin Reuter took that opportunity to converse with Jack Sterner on the hill. Sterner coming in two tonight, 3-1 and one with a 2.25 ERA, pitching really, really well and really becoming the staff ace, the Thursday pitcher you want to have on the hill. The kick and fire from Jack, and that will be dirted again. So bounces to Reuter, and the count goes from 0-2 to 3-2. and two. Can you believe you four? The 3-2 from Sterner. And he, on the change, he gets him out in front and a swing and a miss from Anderson. No runs, no hits, no errors in the bottom of the first. We go to the top of the second, 0-0. Cougars and Cornhuskers on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. For more BYU baseball, let's rejoin the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Top of the second inning here at Hawks Field at Haymarket Park in Lincoln, Nebraska. Beyond the center field wall and berm and beautiful pine trees got the freeway and beyond that you've got Memorial Stadium home of the Cornhuskers football team capacity 90,000 in sight of the Mangum to Matthews miracle of seven years ago it was an unforgettable day for me and anyone else who is lucky enough to be in that stadium or watching or listening that was a lot of fun Cougars beat the Cornhuskers in that most memorable season opener all right Jacob Wilk leads off BYU second and takes low and away for ball one from Cody Frank. If everything goes according to head coach Will Bolt's plan, this will be the last inning of work for Frank. Jacob lifts that to left field, but end of the bat, and it'll be caught by the left fielder Chick. So Cam Chick makes the catch, and that'll be one out for BYU here in the top of the second. A fly out to left. 
Now batting the right fielder, number 20. So Ryan Sapiti steps Ryan in. Sapiti, the right fielder. BYU's RBI leader. Added to his tally, got two in that big win over Santa Clara on Saturday back at Miller Park. Now at 27 on the year. Cody Frank goes off speed, 77 miles per hour. And a take for strike one. Dropped it in for strike one. Speeds it up a little bit, but breaking for strike two. A swing and a miss from Sapiti at 82 miles an hour. So 77 for strike one, 82 for strike two. The 0-2, and that'll be a three strike out, a swinging strike out. BYU's third frontwards K of the day in the batter's box. So Sapiti is down on strikes. And again, the plan is to have Frank pitch just the two innings, but he's retired his first five batters and three of them via swinging strikeouts. Austin Deming will hit now for BYU. Two out top of the second. Cougars and Cornhuskers scoreless. Austin Deming, and he is on a tear. He'll take inside for ball one. Austin has reached in nine of his last ten plate appearances. He's five for his last six, including four runs in an RBI. And he hits that in the air to right center. Right fielder moves to his right by about ten feet and makes the catch. Another three up, three down inning for BYU as Deming is retired on the fly out to right field. So we go bottom second, top of the second. It was no runs, no hits, no errors, and no one left on. We go bottom two. BYU and Nebraska 0-0 on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is BYU Baseball. Now back to the ballpark and the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Catcher Griffin Everett leads off the bottom of the second for Nebraska. Cornhuskers home runs leader with six on the year. Takes away for ball one from Jack Sterner. Jack Sterner, BYU's leader in innings pitched this year. 44, now 45 innings pitched to lead the Cougs. The wind-up and delivery for the right-hander, and he gets Everett out in front of that one for a swing and a miss at 81 miles per hour. So a change from Sterner evens the count at 1 and 1. Nebraska in Big Ten play 4 and 5. BYU and WCC play 6 and 6, and on three straight wins. The wind-up and the fire from Jack, and that'll be... Outside corner. He paints it for two strikes in the count. Jack doesn't like the ball. He'll get a new ball thrown to him. One ball, two strikes, no one out. And no one on here in the bottom of the second. BYU's gone one, two, three in both the first and the second. There have been no base runners yet in this game as the Cornhuskers went one, two, three in their bottom half of the first. So nine hitters between the two teams and all retired. And that'll be high for ball one. Two about ball two, beg your pardon. Two balls and two strikes. The count even at two and two. Griffin Everett hits in six of his last eight games coming in two tonight. Awaits the two two. He'll ground that to Brock Watkins. Handles at chest level and then throws low, but well handled by Jacob Wilk at first for the six three ground out and two are out. Jacob Wilk played some very nice first base. Is coming in as a regular starter. He's a really good picker at first base and took a low throw from Watkins for out number two. So out number one in the second inning. We are in the second inning, and that's one gone. Griffin Everett on the 6-3 ground out. Nick Wimmers, the DH, will hit. Wimmers is a switch hitter. Will, of course, go lefty against the right-handed Sterner, and he swings and misses at a 93-mile-per-hour offering. The heater from Sterner opens the count 0-1. Foul to the screen, 0-2. Jack gets ahead. Wimmers hasn't played a lot. This is his eighth game played. He did get in the, he did start the, the Tuesday game against Creighton that was suspended after three innings, halted due to weather. They'll try and pick that one up. And the 0-2 turns into 1-2. and two. Top of the zone and not chasing was Wimmers. So one ball, two strikes, one out, no one on. Bottom two of a scoreless game. Cougars and Cornhuskers. Sterner's delivery. And that's a sharp grounder, but foul at the first base bag. Jacob Wilk gave chase, took a stab at it, but First base umpire Tim Farrig all over it. Said, nope, that was foul, so we'll do it again. One ball and two strikes to number 47, Nick Wimmers. 
On base is Bryce Matthews, who's in a hitting rut himself. 0 for his last nine at the plate. A rare losing home record for Nebraska right now. More on that in a moment. The 1-2, and that's a swinging strikeout. Frontwards K. As Sterner gets Wimmers to chase a 90-mile-per-hour fastball around the letters. And two gone here in the bottom of the second. And that's Sterner's second strikeout of the day. So with Bryce Matthews digging in, I'll get back to that home record for the Cornhuskers. Five and seven here at Haymarket Park. This is the 21st season of Haymarket. In the preceding 20 seasons, all 20 years, they've had a winning home record. But they're under 500 now as that's a take outside for ball one to Matthews. One ball, no strikes. Two balls and no strikes. Maybe the first 2-0 and count we've seen from Sterner so far. The 2-0. And that's a little chopper to the pitcher. Sterner will field his position. Set and fire. And that's it. Another 1-2-3 inning. As it goes 1-3 to end the second. For Nebraska, bottom of the second. No runs, no hits, no errors. Still no base runners through two innings for either team. We go top three. Cougars and Cornhuskers scoreless on the new skin. BYU Sports Network. For more BYU baseball, let's rejoin the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Josh Cowden leads off BYU's top of the third and takes strike one from Cody Frank. Again, the plan was pitch Cody Frank only two innings, but he goes six up, six down in his first two. They let him go into a third. Breaking ball high for ball one, so one and one to Josh Cowden. Four left-handed bats in interim head coach Trent Pratt's lineup tonight. Pratt, McIntyre, Cowden, and Hall. And Cowden hitting out of the seven hole. The DH faces a 1-1 count. That'll be insider on the kneecaps for ball two. Two and one to Josh. Josh getting a second consecutive start at DH. Just two for his last 19, but one of his two was that big two-run home run against Santa Clara on the weekend. Popped up at home plate. Catcher Everett will handle it. Just about 15 feet up the first baseline. One gone for BYU. That is the first seven batters retired. Cougars yet to have a base runner. And Nebraska. Yet to put a runner on base. Colin Reuter, the BYU catcher, will hit. Number 18, Colin Reuter. Colin Reuter, the high school teammate of Ozzie Pratt. Ozzie Pratt, the nephew of interim head coach Trent Pratt. Trent Pratt was brought to BYU with head coach Mike Littlewood when he came up from Dixie. We're on Coach Pratt in a moment as Reuter takes high for ball one. So this is... Trent Pratt's 10th season on the BYU staff, all 10 with Coach Littlewood. He spent the previous six with Mike down at Dixie on that staff. It's a swing and a miss from Reuter for one and one. One out, no one on. Trent Pratt, a Tuilla native. Played his college ball at Arizona State and Auburn. Two excellent P5 programs, and that's inside and painted for strike two. One ball, two strikes to Reuter, looking to stay alive in the count. The right-handed bat of Reuter facing Cody Frank. It'll be a chopper to third. Long throw. Good throw. Two gone. Anderson. Made a nice throw from the third base bag over to Style at first. So a 5-3 put out. And that's eight straight batters retired by Cody Frank. So Dawson Hall back of the order now. The nine-hitter. The left fielder Hall. Will face the righty Cody Frank. Cougars yet to put a man on base. Almost one time through the order here. And that'll be a check swing, but taken outside for ball one. Coach Pratt was all SEC as a senior catcher at Auburn. And that's an inside pitch, but caught enough of the edge for strike one. One and one to Dawson Hall. On the bus ride to the airport. As Hall takes strike two. Man, he's inside edge, outside edge. Got it going to Cody Frank. Coach Pratt talking about uh, running into Bo Jackson back in his Auburn days. And then that's, that prompted a whole bunch of Bo Jackson stories. As out in front of that change up at 83 miles per hour, Dawson Hall is down on strikes. Another swinging strikeout for Cody Frank. And that is another three up, three down inning 
for Nebraska pitching and BYU hitting. Cougars have gone one time through the order without a base runner. We go to the bottom of the third for BYU top three. No runs, no hits, no errors, no one left on. Scoreless Cougars and Cornhuskers. Bottom of the third inning next here on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. For more BYU baseball, let's rejoin the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Still waiting for our first base runner of this game. We're bottom three, and Nebraska shortstop Core Jackson fouls the first pitch he sees from Jack Sterner. Back over the roof, strike one. 0-1 to Jackson from Jack Sterner. Jack will drop it in, that curveball at 72 miles an hour for strike two. So the foul back, and then the breaking ball just dropped perfectly in the 0-2 now to Core Jackson. No balls, two strikes. Kick and fire high. That's chase pitch. One ball, two strikes. Nebraska top 15 in attendance in each of the last eight seasons. They were sixth nationally last year, and they're top 10 this year. That's fisted foul. Just beyond the stands, into the stands, down the third baseline. Nice catch made off the ricochet. And in a park as beautiful as this, with a fan base that perennially supports baseball very, very well. You can see why the numbers stay high. What a, what a great place to play and watch ball and broadcast ball. The 1-2, and that'll be in the dirt to Rooter for ball two. Two balls, two strikes after Sterno got it in front, 0-2 oh, to Jackson. The 2-2 two, two will be low for ball three. So we've yet to see a base runner, but... Jack's got to throw a strike or get an out here or avoid seeing a man on base for the first time. The first six Nebraska hitters retired. The first nine BYU batters retired in order. The 3-2, no one out, no one on. And that is fouled back over the roof. Out of play. The count stays 3-2 and two as Jackson stays alive in the count. Core Jackson, just 14 hits on the year, but gets a lot of bang for his buck. 12 RBI on his 14 hits this season. The shortstop, Core Jackson. Second of three left-handed bats, and that's a slow roll to second baseman Ozzie Pratt. He'll scoop it up and fire, and that's a 4-3 ground out and one out for Nebraska here in the bottom of the third inning. So the first seven Nebraska batters are retired, bringing up the eight hole, and the center fielder Luke Sartori. Sartori getting his 17th start in his 28th game play. This is the 31st game played by the Cornhuskers. They're 12 and 18. 30th game for BYU. Cougs are 17 and 12. And again on a three-game win streak. Squaring and popping it up. It'll be a short hop to Wilk and he'll tag the runner on his way to first base. And so Sartori trying to reach on a bunt. Got a little too much on that. And right to Jacob Wilk. Handled it off a hop and took care of the runner in the base path. So a ground out to Wilk, and that's eight straight. Nebraska batters retired. Jack Style, the first baseman, will now hit. So Sartori is followed by Style, and I find that interesting. That's take for ball one. Sartori, part of the word sartorial, and sartorial relates to Style. And Sartori and Style hit back-to-back at the eight and nine holes here for Nebraska. I think it's unusual. Could be just me. The 2-0. That's taken for strike one. Top of the zone, a little away, but caught the edge and two and one's the count. That was 89 miles per hour. The wind up and delivery and from two and one to three and one. Maybe the first three and one count I remember Jack getting to. Those three balls and a strike two out, no one on for Jack Style. Style 0 for his last 11 at the plate. The 3 1. And he lifts that to center field, deep center field. McIntyre back and on the track and makes the catch. Nine up, nine down for the Cornhuskers. Two. We are through three complete innings. No runs, no hits, no errors in the bottom of the third for Nebraska, and both teams have seen their first nine batters retired. 0-0 into the fourth on the new skin, BYU Sports Network.